Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. We finally made it through the work week here. It is uh, about 11.03 a.m. here, California time, June 14th, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.5. Just noticed the bells here were off all night, so I will add those back on. Not for sure how that happened, but uh, they should be up and running now. All right, latest activity, as I mentioned, a 1.5 here into the region of California. Did see some further activity off the coast here of Northern Cal, uh, just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone once again. We'll check that out here in a second. Taking a live look here at the southwest rift zone with uh, no eruption there across the Kilauea volcano. This is still just some volcanic gases around the area where we last seen our fissure eruptive fissure event take place there earlier this month but uh, as of right now the eruption was short-lived only lasting about 10 hours that day so there is no um, current eruption but obviously if we look at the deformation data here on this chart let me show you guys here real quick we're still going up 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 and up is the trend here and there is no sign of it slowing down we're, in fact we're not even looking at any type of slowdown whatsoever compared to previous model runs uh, if we were to go back the last few months or so you would see stair-stepping ladder type event here uh, during each pulse uh, further ground inflation there's the eruption short-lived eruption there back on the second to third of june we dropped a little bit. We lost probably about a week's worth of accumulated magma, or at least the volume in that area. And um, as you can see, since then, we've just gone up, up, and up. And we're above that previous level here that we've seen when we've seen that short-lived eruption there on the southwest rift zone. So we're still watching this. Um, it's kind of interesting. This is a little out of normal in terms of the trends that normally take place out here something's uh, happened here but we're still continuing to see an increase here in the inflation and we're just going up and up and up and we're still currently at the highest level observed there across the summit area in the upper east rift zone since the 2018 eruption there that uh, kicked off much further away from the summit out there on the east rift zone of the big island hard to say exactly what's going to happen right now but uh, with this accumulated uh, magma and the inflation going on here with only a slight amount of fracturing there earlier this month on the southwest rift zone i think we're going to see displacement down here further or possibly even out to the east rift zone here uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on it right now inflation is high but earthquake activity uh, very minimal not seeing a whole lot here we're noticing some southward migration of earthquake activity somewhat shallow down here it's a little odd but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this area for uh, any signs of uh, maybe an impending eruption or at least a magma intrusion event that may take place here soon. All right, uh, West Coast here. See what's going on. Lighten up slightly with earthquake activity. Make sure the bells are off. Well, the bells were never on, but they are on now. It's muted as far as the audio goes. Everything looks good. Earthquake activity. There's that quake out here into the Gorda Ridges. Now, if you look here, this is a divergent zone, separation here of the seafloor. Slowly, of course, over time, hopefully. Don't want any massive opening out here, it, you know, in, in terms of quickness. But uh, this activity obviously been building new seafloor over time. This should add further strain out here against the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone where we've been watching. Uh, you know, quite a bit of tremor occur out there in this area. This is yesterday's tremor count. 333 is the epicenter count. Um, southern end, a little bit of migration here northward across the central and the northern segment here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, this is tremor, tremor that occurs down into the deeper regions of the subduction zone area. And uh, if we look at the last month or so coming up on almost a month since it's been going on here uh, we see that the majority of these trimmers almost almost 9500 9466 here have been at the southern end 
of the Cascadia subduction zone. So with this renewed activity out here, we'll see what it does to the trimmer count tonight in this area. All right, Pacific Northwest, aside from some small microquake activity around Mount St. Helens and northward, not a whole lot of big activity happening up there. Uh, Northern California, pretty quiet, aside from the typical movement there across the geothermal fields of the Clear Lake Volcanic Field and the Bay Area. Some movement on the Calaveras Fault. Uh, we did have some small microquake activity, well, a 2.9 yesterday, and uh, looks like a 1.4 following that last night. Really not seeing any major unusual activity here to take note of today. Really no major swarms. Um, as you can see, just mainly microquake activity out here today in the area. Some movement out in Nevada and Utah as well. Yellowstone National Park up here, not showing a whole lot, but let's go check it out here real quick, see what's up. And this here, last night, looks like that is a thunderstorm that kicked up here. Let me double, I wonder if we can go back that far. Just want to double check, because that, that reading did show up there on quite a few um, seismograph stations. I want to go back to weather radar, and I think we can go back here the last 12 hours, and we'll keep an eye on this area up here. All right, 12 hours, we'll play and see, see if I'm right. Watch this area right here. Should move off into the Yellowstone area. It's a little slow. Not for sure why, but uh, it's getting there <laughs> eventually. Yeah, look at that. See, thunderstorms moved through that area about 12 hours ago, a little bit less. And uh, that's exactly what we see here. I try to pinpoint this and show you guys that this is not volcanic activity or magma movement or anything other than thunderstorms and wind. Wind can make a, uh, a very nice signal signal on that chart as well. But yeah, look at that. Thunderstorms blew through a little bit. Uh, wind, I'm sure some rain and some maybe even hail. But a lot of this is going to be the thunder, the uh, vibration from that. And it shows up across the majority of these stations here when we get these summer thunderstorms. Aside from that, earthquake activity, well, I'm really not seeing any. Moving on, moving on. Texas and Oklahoma, typical patterns out here. Oil fields getting hit, nothing of unusual activity. Crazy to think that, that this is all normal out there, at least recently here, uh, across the oil fields of Oklahoma and Texas area. Puerto Rico fairly quiet down here, only a couple twos and a three. As uh, far as new large-scale activity goes overnight, uh, looks like we did have some movement out into the mid-Atlantic Ridge. We've got a little bit of swarming going on out here. We zoom into this area. There you have it. Looks like a 5.9 and a couple other earthquakes, two 5.9s down there in the mid-Atlantic Ridge. This area has been somewhat quiet here over the past 30 days. Let's see what we got. Uh, minimal movement. Looks like a couple fours out here, but it's it's been somewhat quiet out here across these um, oceanic divergent zones. Looks like that is coming to an end, though, in terms of that quiet spell. Uh, so we can continue to keep an eye on that. Of course, this is, um, well, what did I do with my picture? Looks like I lost it. But, uh, yeah, this is the spreading seafloor center here. A couple different fracture zones. You can see the new oceanic crust being formed throughout time. And, uh, yeah, the latest one, a 5.9. So uh, we'll continue to watch that. Up north, not a whole lot going on there through the northern Atlantic. South America area, let's see what we got here. Nothing showing up aside from a five-pointer yesterday there off or uh, right around the Peru area. But uh, looks like there's another four down south here along the Chile area. See what we got in Alaska here. Still quite active. Looking at uh, a little bit of swarming going on around the Cook Inlet area. 
with a uh, couple smaller quakes and a three-pointer involved in there. Pretty deep, 103 kilometers deep. Uh, we are getting quite a bit of deeper activity here in this region. Of course, keep an eye on the subduction zone. All this deeper activity could be uh, an indicator here. Maybe some uh, further large-scale movement upstream here across the, uh, the strained zone. All right, one earthquake here across the Kurokamachaka from yesterday. That's going to be a 4.1. Uh, aside from that, let's see what else we got here on the globe. Typical patterns of earthquakes here. Taiwan southward. Getting a little bit of movement here south of Australia out on another oceanic uh, divergent boundary or fracture zone here, it looks like. A couple four stirring up literally within about 20 minutes of each other here. So some rapid activity. As far as New Zealand goes, doesn't look like there's any uh, major movement, but uh, we'll keep an eye on this area today with uh, this activity occurring south here. Could add further strain in this region. Mediterranean area looks uh, very typical out here for the any earthquake uh, any day, right? Like far as earthquake activity on any given day, it looks typical. Twos and a couple threes out there. Uh, let's check out space weather, see what's going on here. Hope everyone's going to have a good weekend, a good Friday. It's supposed to be another hot one out here in California, about 97 degrees. A little bit of a cool down, right, from 108 that it was here a couple days ago. Uh, looking at a sunspot here with uh, complexity, growing complexity here. That's going to be one to watch here in the coming days for maybe some Earth-directed flares and also CMEs. That's going to be sunspot 3712. Overall threat right now for flaring, 99% chance for C flare. M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance. And there's our beta gamma structure of 3712. That's about the only one that I can see of noteworthy value for uh, some stronger flaring. No major roars in the forecast for now. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center out here for as thunderstorm activity goes. Looks like some more up around Yellowstone. And a slight risk of... Uh, oh, Yellowstone's not up here. Yellowstone's over here. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> How'd Yellowstone, well, maybe in uh, who knows how many millions of years it might move over here. But, uh, yeah, some marginal risks here for some severe weather around the northwestern corner of Wyoming. Slight risk for some severe weather out here. That includes a 2% chance for tornadoes. Wind looks to be the main threat along with a little bit of hail, but they're focusing mainly on this dashed area uh, where the strongest winds are possible today so stay safe out there if you're out in these areas for tomorrow saturday we're getting that uh movement further up north into canada also some northern tier states here showing some uh, slight risk with a five percent chance for tornado activity here across portions of nebraska and also into the iowa area so just a heads up if you're in those regions wind and hail threats as well All right, uh, what else we got? Anything major going on out here? Kind of a, it's it's not super quiet, but it does seem a little too quiet for a Friday. Patterns here, far as potential hurricane activity in the Gulf. Well, right now, there's still there's still kind of hinting at a little development here towards the uh, 23rd of June. That's a ways out, right? That's about what we've got now, nine days out. We'll continue to watch this weather model, see what it picks up on. But it's been hinting at some type of tropical development stirring up there and coming into the Gulf area. Like I say, it's too early to tell. These weather models can change daily, but uh, it is hinting at something been consistent with that it's been uh, hitting at some type of activity they're developing towards that time frame so we'll continue to check back on that uh, it's very warm down there quite a bit I've uh, was out here swimming last week and 
the waters are quite warm. I've been out here in July, August, a little bit later in the year, and June. It, it's it's a lot warmer, I think, than any of those months that I've been out there. Uh, that water was quite warm, and that's uh, the perfect ingredient for uh, hurricanes. Kind of curious to see what uh, the season has in store out here in terms of hurricane activity. Here's current sea surface temperatures. Look at that, just cooking out here, stewing out there in the Gulf of Mexico, 85 degrees. Yeah, I felt about 85 degrees out here across the Gulf of uh, the Texas region. A lot warmer than over here. I, I really don't like swimming out here across the Pacific. It is cold waters, 49 degrees out here. It's, yeah, no thanks. No thank you. It's nice, definitely nice out there in the Gulf, but uh, Man, I came back here with uh, some itchy marks on my ankles. And they're not mosquito bites at all. I know that for a fact. But I don't know what it is. I, it's the first time I've ever experienced it. Coming back with uh, you know, there's some type of bites. They're not fleas. They're not mites. But very itchy spots on my ankles. I don't know if anyone knows that. Locals down there. I tried to look it up. It looks like maybe um, a search showed me uh, swimmers. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Swimmers itch or something like that. It's weird, but they are itchy as heck. And um, I don't know how to get rid of them. I don't know what bit me. There, I have multiple itchy spots on my ankles. And that's about it. Not on my legs or anywhere, just on my ankles. It's really weird. So let me know in the comments uh, if you know what that is. I I picked them up sometime after. Uh, I noticed them about a day or so after I was swimming out here in the Gulf. A little weird. Anyway, all right. Have a good Friday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on tonight. Unless something major happens, and of course we'll jump back in. Have a good Friday, everyone. Stay safe out there.